Mother's Day to all of the moms who are joining us here today as well as online. We are glad to celebrate this day with you. If you're visiting with us here this morning for the very first time, we have a very special welcome to you as well. You can go ahead right now and scan this QR code that's right next to me here. That way you can find out all about the things that are happening here at River Hills and it's a great way for you to sign up for things that are coming up. River Hills, you are such a generous church and we love when you give. It enables us to do many things with our ministries, like for our children's ministry, we can do vacation Bible school in the summer. With our student ministry, we get to go to events like Move and Mix. So thank you so much for being so generous. You can drop off your tithes and offerings to the ushers at the end of the service, or you can give on our website or our app. Milford Miami Ministries is hosting their annual underwear drive. We invite you to bring in brand new packages of underwear to help those in our community that need them. It's a great way for you to serve our community. You can do it every single Sunday in the month of May. We just finished our first trailhead class and we loved it. We want you to be able to be a part of it. So another one is coming up in June. In fact, it's on June 4th and June 11th. And we invite you and your whole family to experience this together. You can sign up online for this class and then join us right after second service on June 4th. We are so excited to bring back the night of worship. On May 18th at 7 o'clock p.m., we invite you and your family to experience a wonderful evening of praise. We cannot wait for you to be here. Bring your friends, bring your family, and let's pack the house and celebrate our Jesus. Our baby dedication celebration is coming up on May 21st at 4 o'clock p.m. Our baby dedication is designed for you as parents to begin thinking about what your baby needs most. And we believe that that's a personal relationship with Jesus. If you'd like to participate in our baby dedication celebration, it's on May 21st at 4 o'clock p.m. You can go to our website and go to the events tab and sign up there. Thank you so much for joining us today here at River Hills. Now let's enjoy the rest of the service. Good morning, River Hills, and <laughs> happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. We are coming to you from the Highbury Center, which has been serving missionaries and housing missionaries since the 1890s. And today we are here because yesterday we finished up our ministry in Birmingham where we were able to encourage church leaders from the UK, from three nations in Africa, from uh, Germany, from the United States, from Australia, hundreds of people. And we feel like God used us in a great way. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers. And we'll see you soon. In my opinion, mothers are the biggest influence anyone can have in their lives. And the reason I say it is because my mom was such a huge influence on who I am today and my upbringing. It started at a very young age. She had myself and my sister in the church every single Sunday, and not just in the church, but being active. Uh, she was a Sunday school teacher, so she was there every Sunday, kind of, you know, spreading the word of God and, and being a disciple maker um, for all the young students at that time. And also, like I said, not just being in the church, but being active. She had my sister and uh, choir for the adult and the youth um, band. And I also played drums and piano for both of those bands as well too. So we were kind of just, a, just the church family every single Sunday. And it wasn't just on Sunday mornings. My mom helped me navigate the ups and downs and the trials and tribulations of life. And the biggest thing that I admire about her is her strength and her faith in God. High school was a very difficult time for me. I remember, you know, typically every single day coming home, my parents would be arguing. Um, and it eventually ended up leading to their divorce. And their divorce was very hard on my family and myself, but in particular, specifically my mom. At that time, my dad had moved out. Um, my sister was in college. I was a senior in high school getting ready for college. So my mom had to juggle all of these things, financially helping my sister, you know, in college, trying to get ready for me to go to college, and then also balancing the divorce on our hands as well. Looking back, I never remember my mom having a bad day. She always kept a smile on her face, um, and you would never, never know how difficult that was for her just looking at her. And if you ask her today, the reason why she was able to overcome such a difficult situation is because of the strength and faith that she has in God. No matter what was going on, she always knew that everything would be okay in the end because of that relationship that she had. And I carry that with me today. No matter what I'm going through, whether it's an up or a down, I always give the glory or I pray to God because I know He's always the answer to everything. So mom and all moms, thank you so much for being you and being such a huge, important piece in everyone's lives.
Man, let's give some God some praise for that. Moms, happy Mother's Day. Hey, good morning to our online friends and family watching online. Hello to Fayetteville for those of you that are tuning in. My name is Adam. I oversee our middle school and high school ministries here at River Hills Christian Church. And it's a pleasure and honor, it's a privilege to be here, especially in this 40 Days with Jesus series that we are in. And so I'm excited to uh, continue the journey with you all. And if this is your first time here in this series, I'm going to catch you up to speed here just real quick. Right after Easter, Resurrection Sunday, Jesus started appearing over to pe many people, hundreds of people, over a series of 40 days. It was eyewitnesses recorded. First Corinthians talks about the massive numbers that Jesus appeared to. And he, we're getting to, to the end of those 40 days. And so I want to underscore something. This coming Thursday, 7 p.m., be here. I would love to see this place packed, one spirit, one body, worshiping Jesus. It's going to be a fun time. And it's going to be not just a fun time. It's going to be an impactful time for you and for your soul and with your relationship with Jesus. And so last week, there was this slide. And it really sets us up for here this morning. And it goes like this. We cannot... It, what? There we go. We cannot live out the great commission until we first live out the great commandment. And so we're going to be looking at the great commission, but the great commandment, see, Jesus was cornered by many people throughout his earthly ministry. Hey, what's the most important law? There's over 600 laws to follow. What's the most important thing? What's the next most important thing? And to summarize the whole law, summarize the Torah, love God, love people. And out of that love, I mean, it's recorded in the Bible that as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, they're going to know you by the love you have. You're gonna, they're going to know that you're mine. This is Jesus talking by the love that you have. And out of that, we live the great commission. Before we get into that, let me ask you this question. Do you ever feel like, be honest with yourself, do you ever feel like it's impossible to follow God in your daily life? Maybe you go through this season, this tough week, and it's like, oh, Lord, really you want me to do something here, I, you want me to make a change, or it's just like, uh, even getting day to day, moms, dads, you know, you're trying to get kids up, get going, and where are my coffee drinkers at? Go ahead, be proud, because I'm a coffee drinker. Some of you are being shy, there we go. And so, can you imagine, you know, those weeks where you don't have any coffee, and you know, you're like on E, and you don't have any coffee, I mean, that week really feels like mission impossible, trying to manage all the household together. And so, and I think of the movie with Tom Cruise, there's multiple of them, and I think of this picture, I mean, wow, he's climbing the skyscraper ghost protocol. Now, let me tell you something, whatever you think about Tom Cruise, <laughs> that's irrelevant, but let me tell you this, I have to give respect to him here. He does his own stunts. I mean, that's incredible to think about. This is him actually doing that, and it gets produced in a movie. I mean, maybe you've seen this Rogue Nation. I mean, those of you coffee drinkers, you know, kids having a bad week, you feel like this. <laughs> Some weeks following Jesus, it feels like this. If we're truthfully honest and we take the mask off. See, here's the truth. We all have mission and possible moments in our lives. You know, for me, I remember one mission and possible moment was for me in 20. 14. See, I just graduated Bible college from Manhattan Christian College, and I, I knew that I wanted to go into ministry, but I didn't want to force God's hand, so I applied for different things. One of those being was a GTA position, which stands for Graduate Teaching Assistant, and so I taught public speaking at Kansas State University, and that was a fun experience. I had 72 students. I was in charge of four speeches that get more in length over time, and so then you have to go back and rewatch all those, and then you have your graduate coursework on top of that, and then right when I made all of those commitments, a church in the Manhattan area said, hey, we heard you just recently graduated. We're trying to find, here's the key word, guys, part-time youth minister position. I mean, that part-time youth minister, that doesn't really exist in the world of youth ministry. It's always full-time. You're always on the clock. You're always taking phone calls. And so uh, I, I think, like, wow, what does Shannon go through with VBS? I mean, that's probably how it was, but that was for, like, doing VBS, like, 17 weeks in a row in the semester. I was, like, mentally walking around with this all, too many plates and balls, and I would drop them, have to pick them back up. And actually, it was so bad in December of that semester <laughs> that I was in the hospital, I had all this chest pain going on. The doctors did all these scans on my heart and they said, no, 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 you're, you're a healthy, young, 22-year-old. You just have a lot of stress. We, you need to make a change in your life. And I said, Lord, I'm on mission impossible. I can't do this. 
And so when we're looking at this particular passage, it may have you feeling overwhelmed. Uh, can I do this? Do I, uh, are you sure, Lord? Is, is this for me? Is it, is it just maybe the pastor's thing to do? Maybe fearful, you have doubt, maybe some form of insecurity that manifests itself into anxiety, some anxious thought in your mind, or maybe for you, it's like when we get into this passage, it's like, oh, that's a chore, that's not a joy. I mean, there's so many different feelings, just this sense of uncomfortableness. Maybe somebody in this room, when we look at the Great Commission, you feel unqualified, inadequate. I don't have my master's or my PhD in Greek. Adam, how, how can I understand? How can I do this? Regardless of where you're at in any of these thoughts or feelings, guess what? You're in great company. <laughs> Because that's a, when we're in the middle of that discomfort, when you feel discomfort in your life, that's a great opportunity to alert God and say, hey, let's talk, let's connect. You know, I had to memorize the Great Commission in Bible college, and so for me, I, I share what I'm about to put on the screen. It's research by Barna Research Group, and they're very credible, and keep in mind, it's from 2017. Their sample size was about 1,000 for people, and so to keep that in the scope, but they are credible. There's some warrant in what they bring. I was actually shocked when I saw this research come up on the screen. Churchgoers, have you heard of the Great Commission? 51% said no. <laughs> you know, if you Google sermons on the Great Commission, you know, the big mainstream awesome churches, I, I tend to like not see them preach on the Great Commission as much. You know, it's kind of our smaller local churches we see pop up on the filter. No. 51%, I mean, that's shocking. I mean, 6% not sure, 17, yes, and it means X, Y, and Z, which what we'll talk about. Yes, but I can't recall it. The reality is the final charge Jesus gave us, that's the Great Commission. And so let me ask this to you, set this into your mind. Before you were to leave planet Earth, what would be your final message, your final charge to your friends and family? Hey, don't forget to take the trash out. Don't forget to feed the dogs. Check on the cat. Hey, be nice to your brother. Be nice to your sister. <laughs> you know, hey, don't forget to clean the coffee pot out. You know, whatever it may be. And so we're going to be looking at this final charge by Jesus, his words. And today's goal is understanding the Great Commission. It's, it's actually liberating. It gives us freedom as believers in Jesus. It's not a have to. It's not this burdensome. It's actually a joy and so it's, we're looking at it found in the Gospel of Matthew, an eyewitness account, biography of Jesus. He tells us all about the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, commission. What does that word commission really mean? Because I, I want us to just make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to commission. You can use it as a noun, instruction, command, a duty given, a particular people group, a group of people officially charged with a particular function. Or we see it as a verb in society. It's to give an order, to authorize a production of something. You know, I remember first really seeing the word commission used as to build something. I've been to Germany a handful of times. I took a mission trip one year to Europe. And I remember hearing about the castle that inspired the Walt Disney Castle, Neuschwanstein. And the Ludwig Kunig. Kunig is the word for uh, king in German, and this guy put a lot of pressure on people, commissioned out to have this castle done, and guess what? <laughs> he only slept in it for 13 days, so he had this castle commissioned. Jesus gives us a different type of commission, not of a building, but of people, and that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. So here's Matthew chapter 28. Then the 11 disciples went out to Galilee, the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Pause, time out, commercial break. <laughs> Have you ever had a friend or a family member or somebody say, hey, I I'm only gonna believe in God unless like some miracle he just drops down like on a zip line right now here. I mean, you have to have some miracle to just convince me right now. Do you know somebody that has said that thought or shared that thought? I see a few hands, some hiding. Now, here's what's interesting. I mean, at this point, Jesus had walked on water, he taught them to pray, he had done it all, nothing else he could do, put it all on the line, died for our sins, and yet we still have people doubting. Now is that God or is that us? Because 
as human beings, we do human things, and we like to put walls up on our minds and our guard. I mean, if we don't open our mind and open our heart to have that opportunity for the Holy Spirit to nudge you and say, look, I'm trying to teach you something. I wanna show you, I wanna reveal myself. If we put that wall up, and it's, you're gonna miss that miracle. We're gonna miss miracles every day. Verse 18, Jesus came and said, all authority, not some, all authority on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of age. I'm with you always. So I wanna unpack this because there's so much in here. See, Jesus said, all authority, not some, all authority. Now, he's talking to Peter. He's talking to people who know him, who had eyewitness accounts of this. Why is he starting with that? Isn't that already applied? Don't they know by now that Jesus has all authority at heaven on earth? It's been given to him? Well, as human beings, we do human things. We like to take our own authority and package it with our own preferences and use it in a way where it's our own. And especially if you're a really talented, professional, and individual, it's easy for you to fall under the temptation of what I call humanistic willpower. Like, I, I know you got this, God, but I got this. And it's easy to like make ourselves, I got this, my authority, Adam's doing this. It's actually all stems from Jesus because our faith and the actions that follow from it they all need to be centered on Jesus, not our own authority. That's where division happens in the church. And really, authority puts the perspective on the mission because yes, we're on mission for Jesus, but check this out, we're on mission with Jesus. He's alongside of us, the Spirit of God beside us. And so therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. See, my youth pastor, this is how he taught me what the word therefore means, and warning, Plug your ears, because it's gonna get loud. This is what the word therefore means according to my youth pastor. Hey, this is really, really important. <laughs> so now we're all on the same page. We know this is pretty important stuff Jesus is talking about. Go and make disciples. Well, let's start with the word go. When we, look, when we scale back and look at the Greek, the Bible was written in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. When we look at the Greek written here, go means to travel and journey. We're all gonna be on a journey. We're all gonna be traveling. And in, in the context of the disciples, they journeyed to villages. They journeyed and started churches that spread all the way up. Apostle Paul, four missionary journeys went up to Europe. And because of that, you know, we reap the benefit of that here in America. That transferred all the way over there. It, it all started somewhere, folks. And the word go, I find this really interesting the more I dug into it. See, the word go here, it has the same ending. It has the same suffix as for the words baptizing teaching, going, not just go. You know, and I, I think about go because sometimes we as Christians have just viewed this as the golden staple for missionary trips. And I think that's great. I think that's awesome. You know, we actually have a family uh, in the youth ministry. They're taking their own personal family mission trip and they're going to Guatemala. That's amazing. We need that. And if you're not able to go to Guatemala, if you're not able to fly across the world, guess what? Go wing. <laughs> Going causes us to be intentional, too. In making effort, you can start right where you are. I mean, isn't that beautiful? You can start right on the golf course. <laughs> you can start on your kid's soccer team, your kid's dance team. You can, at wherever you find yourself, where you are going as you go, because going is meant to mobilize us. We weren't meant to be reclusive. We weren't made to be isolated. You were wired, designed for community. And so that going is huge. It's, it's important that it has that ending, that multiple places where we go all throughout our day, all throughout our week. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. See, this make disciples, this can be like intimidating, like, well, what is a disciple? It means student. You know, you're a learner of Jesus. You're a student of Jesus. You learn the teachings of Jesus. You obey the teachings of Jesus. You share it as, as you go about your ways. Now, and when we talk about an imperative verb that we see here in the Greek, it's to give an order, it's to give a command when we're talking about this commissioning. And what we see here is that this imperative verb is actually make disciples. Now, while you are going, make disciples. While you're going to school, while you're going to the golf course, while you're in the restaurant, 
while you had that conversation with the waitress, while you bump shoulders with somebody at Walmart you kind of know, you see like three or four times a year, you know of each other but not know each other. You know what I'm talking about. Disciples traveled all around. They planted churches locally, regionally, globally. And here's where I want us to start to summarize things and to build off of this as we move forward as a church is here's this morning's big idea. See, the Great Commission, it's an entire way of life. It's th this is what we do. <laughs> How many of you have Disney Plus and you know Mandalorian? <laughs> you know, I think about this entire way of life, the Great Commission, you know this phrase, this is the way. I mean, this is the way. <laughs> This is the great commission. You know, this is what we do. And Jesus says, I have spoken. I have commissioned you out for this adventure. And, and you have so much purpose beyond what you're thinking in your mind right now. You know, this is the way. This is the great commission, folks. You know, what is that going to look like, though? I mean, it starts with living in a way that will convince people. Like, do they know you by your love, or do they know you by just yelling at people, or, you know, wow, you really took that well. Someone got in your face and yelled at you. How were you so calm when that happened? You know, I, I heard someone say a conversation like that about somebody. You know, do you know me? Will, will they know you by the love that you have, that you embody? And then on that, we see fruit of that. We see baptizing, baptizing in the name of Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, pause for a second, because I think sometimes we skip about this, and I'm breaking one of my personal preaching rules. I do this with our students right here when we hit this topic of the Trinity. See, whether you're Lutheran or Baptist or what, whatever denomination that falls under mainstream Christianity, is that we believe in a triune God. That means three in one. So I want to give you guys a math problem. Who in here is really good about math? You know, so you guys are like pumped up. You guys are gonna be the ones to answer this. So here it is. What is one times one times one? There we go. You couldn't mess that up. One, <laughs> three and one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We believe in a triune God. That, I mean, the Trinity, it's powerful, it's complex, but also very simple. I can't think of a better way right now to teach that. One times one times one. If you're sharing your faith with somebody, store that into your tool belt and baptizing and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Well, what does that look like? Modeling our faith, teaching others his word. And you know, we have those 40 days with Jesus. You, know, you can use those, those booklets, those 40 days with Jesus booklets after this whole series is over with. You know, have a, have, start your own neighborhood small group, your own Bible study. You know, the goal isn't to get them in church. The goal is to get them to know Jesus. Life change happens when people meet Jesus. Having action, love God and others. And here's the reality, though. See, a church without the Great Commission, it becomes a country club, a Christian social club. No much different. When we're on, we're on the Great Commission, we are with purpose. We are with Jesus. I mean, it's so easy for churches to kind of have this comfortable country club without even meaning to. And not that God can't use that at all, but I'm so grateful for the vision where River Hills is headed. And so I want to put this here on the screen for you again. You know, Trailhead is something, it's not a Pastor Jeff thing, it's not a Pastor Matt thing. We've had about over 20, 30 people's brains on this to try to nail this down. Because sometimes in North American Christianity, somebody gets baptized and they're like, okay, what's next, church? And we don't have something for them. We don't have any resources. We don't put the, help them put them on that pathway, that trailhead. And so that's what this is designed for, for you to, one, meet people, maybe going through similar struggles and meet new friends and people of our church that you've never met before, but also to help equip you, encourage you. How do we navigate? How do you find your next steps with Jesus? Because that's what we're about here at River Hills. I mean, I would love to really stress out Pastor Matt. I would love at some point for us to say, you know what, we have so many people signed up for Trailhead June 4th and 11th, like we're gonna have to have, we're gonna have to recruit more volunteers, more people hosting. I mean, can you imagine, just imagine with me, if we had over five, 700, maybe even a thousand people going through Trailhead in a year. I mean, wow, helping people find their next step. Because I think sometimes, whether you followed Jesus for a long time or it's been pretty fresh to you, it's easy to kind of just stay in the same spot where you're at on the trail. 
and we want to help you. We want to promote growth in, in your marriage, in your kids' lives, in your relationships, in your friends. You know, Dallas Willard, he's a great thinker, and he had this quote that really relates to this. We've become so hyper-focused on the conversion and baptism part of the mission that we've neglected to do the important work of teaching people how to live like Jesus taught us to live. I mean, that's so true. And I want you to know that the Great Commission, it's a great movement. I mean, this is huge. This is a big deal. I mean, this was like a mic drop moment, a movement of faith through people. And so for our moms and our grandmas here and motherly figures here, happy Mother's Day. And a special thanks to you for you being a pillar in the faith of your family and your friends. I know I wouldn't be where I am today if it weren't for my mom and my grandma. Actually, we see that in scripture through another relationship with their mom and their grandma. Here's 2 Timothy 1.5. Here's what he wrote. Paul, excuse me, the apostle Paul was pouring into Timothy and this is what he recorded in this letter to him. I, Paul, reminded of your sincere faith Pause for a second. I mean, this is authentic faith. This is meaning like without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy meaning we tend to overjudge others and we underjudge ourselves. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which you first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. I'm persuaded now also lives in you. And this isn't a shot at dads. We'll celebrate you on Father's Day, but in my ministry experience, you know what I have seen stick out? Is that team grandma and team mom. I mean, they're bringing grandkids. They're bringing kids into the church. And maybe there's somebody in this room, you're here right now because grandma or mom say, hey, it's Mother's Day. That's this one thing I want for Mother's Day is for us to go to church. You know, the best part is you can give that gift to your mom, your grandma, more than just one Sunday. I mean, I, I tell you, we have a bunch of Lois, we have a bunch of Eunice sitting right here, right now, that authentic faith pillar that has moved through people. And I think of the relationship I have with my grandma, and you feel free to say, aw, this is me and my grandma. <laughs> I don't want to get emotional, but I don't, and I don't even know when this was taken. It was a while back, as you can tell. <laughs> we'll just keep it there. But... You know, when I was five or six years old, I remember a whisper. My grandma would whisper to me as a young boy, Adam, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, this I know. This I know, it's true. And then it turned into other conversations as I got older. Adam, I don't know how people make it without God. There's so much brokenness. There's so much pain. It's the one common denominator. She struggled with that. I don't know how people make it without Jesus. And then it turned into, hey, Adam, I want you to be a priest. <laughs> you can laugh at that. 930 didn't laugh at as much as that. And I said, no can do, Grandma. I, I, I want to get married. And so thank you, pillars of faith, women in this room. You know, you're going to see a story uh, here later after I pray of Gabe. Gabe's been coming to our church, invited by a friend, and we've had a great time getting to know him. And he recently accepted Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. I don't want to say too much about his story because he's going to tell you himself in the video. But I will say this. You know, he moved to the States around eight or nine years old. And right before he moved, his grandmother accepted Christ. And here's what gives me goosebumps. I mean, COVID. And there's been so many barriers and stuff that have prevented people to travel Guess what, guys? She's here in this room. She gets to see her grandson baptized. I mean, praise God. Amen? That's huge. Amen. And Jesus says, surely I am with you always to the very end of age. You know, we think it's an impossible mission. We have anxiety. We have guilt. None of that matters. It's not an impossible mission because he's with us. He is with us. He sent his spirit and the Holy Spirit here on planet Earth. Now, those movies that have that agent or, or somebody having this mission like Tom Cruise, have you ever seen this quote in a movie? This message will self-destruct in 10 seconds. You seen that? <laughs> you know, Jesus didn't say, go therefore make disciples, baptizing. <laughs> no. 
I'm with you. I'm going to be with you the entire time. It might not even feel like it sometimes. You might feel like you're alone. You might feel like you're abandoned. You might get even a little depressed. But I tell you, you're going to have trouble, but I am with you the entire time. See, we're on mission for Christ, but we're with Christ. Are we going to fumble the football? Are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely, because everybody in this room is a sinner. That's why we need a Savior. And the Great Commission See, it's a call for every follower of Jesus. And we get, sometimes get so caught up on, well, am I gonna say the right thing? Are they gonna do the right thing? Are they, are they gonna accept here? What? Can I tell you something? God's job is, uh, excuse me, our job is obedience. God's job is the outcome. Faithfulness is what we need to do. It's, God sorts that out. It's his supernatural ability. It's easy to kind of take matters into our own authority, our own humanistic willpower. So maybe you're here this morning and you're bought in, like, Adam, this makes sense. It's not so much like a burden. So now what? What do I do? Well, let me say a few things as I wrap up to help you think about this a little bit. I, talk, I think about going, go and going, being intentional about the relationships as you go or as you go out of your way. And I think about so many times that, Yes, I have uh, people have brushed shoulders with me and I've followed up and I've had conversations and I've been able to plant seeds, but I also think about times in my life I haven't been intentional and I need to be intentional all the time. You know, make disciples, ask for opportunities, be in community, encourage one another, show them the love of God, share your story. I mean, can you imagine if we had like 20, 30 emails on Monday come in and Brett Lempner, our video director, he's just like stressed out because he has 30 people willing to give their testimony and make their story known all over. Our online church ministry is a global ministry, guys. I mean, can you imagine? I would love to stress Pastor Matt out. I would love to stress Brett out because we have so many people. We have a whole line out the door of people willing to share their story. And as people do that, respond and believe and trust, even if not everything all makes sense. Because you don't have to explain everything to believe something. Jesus calls us into baptism, and Gabe, after his video testimony in another song, he's going to get baptized. And transformation happens to learn and share the teachings of Jesus. And when we mess up, when we make mistakes, because we will, we repent, we mess up, we ask God for forgiveness, we ask others for forgiveness. And sometimes, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in preaching, it's really tempting to well, we need to do this thing and this thing. This is what I want you to do at the end of the message. That's not where I'm led. This is where I'm led this morning. Where's everybody at? Well, I don't know. But here's what I want you to do, is to fill in this blank. Maybe today, maybe by the time, the, the end of the service, maybe sometime later, because following Jesus starts with, I will. With Peter, I'm gonna drop my nets and I'm gonna start following you. Maybe for you, I will get baptized. I will attend Trailhead. I will attend our worship night this coming Thursday, seven o'clock. Be here, invite friends. It's gonna be super powerful, super encouraging. Maybe I, need, I will start being intentional with friends at my workplace, uh, with my fishing crew, with my golf club, with my, my network of parents that I'm connected with. And it's not about filling seats in, guys, because I think that sometimes we've sent the wrong message in church. It's about helping people find Jesus, life change, offering them a better way, because this is the way. It's an entire way. It's the Great Commission. And the Great Commission, it's designed to help people. It's to help people. It's not a, bur it's not a burden. It's not a chore for all the goodness that can come out of following Jesus, the teachings, his way. And Jesus gave the ultimate mic drop. I mean, this mic drop, everything that he did, it was summarized in these words. Some of your Bibles, it was a red letter, red letters, these were the words of Jesus. I mean, everything led up to this. I mean, he healed people, he taught people how to pray. He did so much for the world, changed humanity. And he said, go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna be with you, I have spoken. I can't say anything more. There's nothing else I can do. Everything's built up to that one moment. So let me ask you this. Where do you see opportunities in your life right now, where are you going? 
to join Jesus on mission with him because the Great Commission, it's an entire way. This is the way. I mean, if you knew Jesus was with you, even when it feels like he's distant, even when you feel alone, even when you feel depressed, even when you feel anxious, even when you just feel like a whole hole is just shot through your family, how would you be different if you knew Jesus was still there? He died on the cross. I mean, Adam and Eve, they got to walk with God in the cool of the day in the Garden of Eden. And sin had entered the world. The blame game happened. Nobody won that day. But there was this whole, the Hebrew word describes sin as chata, missed the mark. There's this gap. And only Jesus fills that gap. And he says, there's a better way. Believe and trust. There's a better way. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to enjoy Gabe's beautiful testimony. Would you bow with me, please? Lord, there's so much on mission here at River Hills. Help us to think about the worship night event this Thursday. Help us to keep trailhead on our minds, sharing our testimony, being on mission for you. It happens in our circles. It happens in our spaces. Lord, I don't know where everybody's at, but I know following Jesus starts with I will. Maybe there's somebody in this room, they need to accept you as your personal Lord and Savior today for the first time ever. Maybe there's somebody that needs to go apologize to somebody. Maybe there's somebody that needs to start being intentional. Maybe there's somebody in this room that's been a bad example of faith. Give them the courage and humility to go and apologize to people that they need to. Lord, we invite your spirit at work here. Help us to fill in that blank. I will what? We love you. We praise you. It's in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's watch your baptism. <laughs>